Hi, this is a quick demo to show how to paint in Megasplat. If you'd like to follow along, I'm going to go into the Megasplat Examples Scenes folder. And I'm going to load the mesh example. There's a mesh tessellation example as well, which looks amazing, uh, but I find that with the video recording going on and everything, it's a little too slow for my uh, laptop. There's also uh, terrain examples. So uh, Megasplat uses a different workflow for terrains. Uh, but it is very similar to this workflow. It just involves a different painting tool. So if you load up the mesh example, uh, if you happen to be uh, not seeing this, then double click on this sphere and you'll zoom to where I am. So to paint, uh, what we need to do is go to Window and then we want to load the Vertex Painter Pro. And what I like to do is dock this over here next to my inspector. And then what you want to do is select this meshes uh, game object here. And what will happen is, is when we activate the vertex painter window, it will find all the meshes here uh, uh, below this, this root game object and allow us to paint on them. So if we click activate, that will turn on the vertex painter. I personally like to turn off the wireframe so I don't see it. And I prefer the disc a visualization of the brush. So we can move around as normal. And if you can see the red disk there. Um, if I switch to sphere, it will do a sphere instead. Um, but we'll go to disk. And then uh, what we can do is go to this custom tab. And so the custom tab is a way to plug in special brushes. So my vertex painter is available for anyone for free on GitHub and Megasplat uses it. Uh, it uses the plugin to plug in a special brush for Megasplat. So to do that, we're going to click on the little selector here, and we're going to select, select the Megasplat Diffuse Texture Array. And so what this will do is uh, allow our brush to know what textures we're painting, and then we can control the size of the brush here to make a larger brush or a smaller brush, the flow of the brush, which is basically how quickly it's going to paint, and then the fall off of the brush. Now, the example scene uses what's called a two-layer shader, which means that there's a bottom layer and a top layer. And fall off or blending really only happens between the layers. So if I choose, um, well, let's first just choose a, a single texture. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and find a moss texture here. I'm going to fill this entire terrain with moss. And so now what we'll see is we have this moss texture over everything in the world. And, you know, it looks pretty good. Uh, but if we were to choose something like this rock cliff and fill it, you would see it tiling really bad right away, okay? And so that's no good. I don't like tiling. I like things to look real and unique. So instead, uh, I don't really paint with individual textures very often. So you can see all the textures here in the array. I hardly ever use this tab. I find it um, very rare to use it. Instead, I'm gonna go over to the cluster tab. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the texture cluster for this rock cliff that we painted down. So what this is, if we go back to the single tab, is that you'll see that many of these textures are similar variations of each other. And so rock cliff here, we have a bunch of variations of the same texture, numbered with zero uh, through four. So in this case, we have four textures. And what I'm gonna do is switch to my cluster tab, make sure that uh, cluster is selected, which it is, this rock cliff, and now I'm gonna fill the terrain. And what you'll see is that it, it's choosing different uh, textures here based on noise. And so that's giving me this huge variety of the terrain, which means that we don't see any tiling anymore. And so generally I paint only with clusters, uh, which is a really nice way to work because you never have to worry about things looking tily um, or, you know, not great. So we filled, we used the bottom layer to fill this. If I paint on the bottom layer, it's going to replace what's currently there. Megasplat allows for one texture per control point and then blends across the triangle. Uh, we, you know, so you'll see here, it's actually blending across this. And if I adjust my contrast on the material here, you'll see that I get a wider or tighter blend. Now this is height map blend, so it should always look pretty good, um, but you'll see that I can soften that up so we get a more natural transition there between these two textures. So uh, I'm using a two-layer shader. 
And so what I can actually do is instead of painting on the same layer, I can switch to the top layer. And when I'm working on the top layer, now the texture that I paint will blend into the current texture. So I could choose something like this wet mud maybe, and I could bring this in here and just paint it, and you'll see it works its way in. And you'll see that it's based on height, so the rocks come through first, and then basically the mud starts to come through. Um, and so this is how you can get really nice blends between things, um, and you can sort of blend your textures together. There's another mode, which is the blended brush mode. And so what this does is paint on both layers at once. So what I could do is choose that, what I would like is this cracked mud texture on the top layer, and I will choose, let me do the moss maybe, on the bottom layer. You can see as I adjust this, it actually updates this preview sphere. And as I change the uh, noise value here, it's changing the blend between these two textures. So now when I paint, I'm going to paint across here, you can see that it's using noise and it's painting both textures down and I'm getting bits of one texture blended into the other one uh, automatically based on this noise data. And so that's how we can create really complex, nice surfaces from our texture clusters. So what you're actually seeing here is that it's choosing between several textures for each layer, and then it's blending between each layer, based, all based on different noise functions. Uh, so that's super powerful to create good paintings. So the way that I generally work in Megasplat um, is I sort of follow this routine, where what I do is I flip over to the cluster mode, I choose something to sort of start things with with my base coat. So I might decide to bring in uh, some of this this texture here, which I particularly like. It's a shore sand texture. And I might paint a bunch of that down. You can see that the stuff that's on the top layer is still uh, blending in there. And as I paint more, it's going to blend into the uh, bottom layer. So it just pushes that weight back and forth. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll choose another texture to blend into that, so maybe this wasteland one, and I'll switch to the top layer. And now I'll bring some of this in just to give it some variability uh, to create sort of those complex terrains uh, by hand. And so by working back and forth like this, you can create very um, subtle transitions, create you know these sort of complex materials between all these different textures and get a super rich texturing uh, that looks amazing, that never tiles never has sort of the artifacts you're used to seeing on standard uh, terrains and always looks amazing. Um, now you don't need a, a one layer uh, shader, or sorry, a two layer shader to do this uh, to get this kind of quality, um, but it allows you to get a lot more uh, sort of variability and stuff. Um, with working with a one layer shader, uh, you can get better performance. And then what you want to do is probably use a low res control mesh or low res um, splat texture if you're using terrains, and then rely on the texture clusters themselves uh, to provide this type of variety that we see here. The texture clusters themselves, uh, by default, they use noise. Uh, you can scale that noise. Um, you can also uh, use height and slope functions as well. So it's super powerful, super easy to work with. And again, if I select this top level meshes, I can actually just paint right over everything in my scene and it will just uh, paint right on to whatever I'm painting on to. Um, increase the flow a little bit here just so you can see it a little faster. And you can see that it doesn't uh, have any boundaries in terms of my painting. Um, and I could come in here and blend these together with a normal brush um, if I really want to make them look seamless. So uh, that's basically how the texture painting works. Uh, there are other paint modes here, um, such as flow painting, um, this, uh, uh, this is actually vertex coloring painting, which you're not going to do a whole lot of in here, but you can use this to control various other uh, settings or to inspect the data. So if we want to actually see the data as it exists, if we look at our color, or sorry, our UV3 uh, X channel, this is actually what controls the blend between those two layers. And I can use the vertex uh, painters, show vertex data, and you can see this is the blend between those two layers. So I could actually go in and paint the different blend if I want to change the blend uh, using this mode. Um, so there's a lot of power here. Another thing that I use quite a bit is this blend target. 
Uh, what this does is by default, this is at one, which means I'm trying to blend fully towards this texture. Um, but what you might do is set this to 0.5 or 0.7 or something like that. And then let's take the shore sand and paint it in here. And we can turn our flow size way up here. And as we paint this, you'll see that, wait a minute, my flow up, that it never really fully blends in. We just get a little bit of it. We can just boost this up a little bit. And then you can see that now we'll never quite get to one. We'll never fully paint in this texture. And so we'll always get a blend between these, these textures. Um, so yeah, I hope you find the painting tool set very easy. Uh, if you have any suggestions for improvements, feel free to reach out. Thank you.